Um, I think that um, we will wait for a few minutes for all the participants to get connected and then we can uh, start the session. Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, session. I'm not sure if you were connected a few minutes ago. I'm uh, Evangelos Kiritsis. I'm a senior analyst in Statcraft, uh, Europe's the largest renewable energy generator. And it is uh, my pleasure to act as a moderator in this session and have uh, so prominent market participants such as yourself. Um, I would like to address um, each of you separately. So welcome, uh, Ms. Sonia Babilis, Chief Investment Officer in Hellenic Republic Asset Development Fund. Mr. Ioannis Margaris, Vice Chairman in uh, ADMIE, Mr. Nicola Batilana, CEO in Hellenic uh, Gas Transmission System Operator, and um, finally, uh, Ms. Um, RG Banila, Head of uh, Structure Financing in the National Bank of Greece. So, welcome everybody from my side. Um, so, this topic is uh, untapping the value of networks through privatization. It's a very interesting and uh, timely topic, I would say, perhaps uh, even more for uh, countries like Greece. And um, I would uh, welcome your um, insights and from your long, I'm sure, market experience. So I would suggest to start uh, with uh, Miss uh, Sonia Babilis, and uh, perhaps um, you can spend uh, like around 15 minutes and uh, share with us your insights on this uh, topic. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure and honor to participate in the fifth HAEE Energy Transition Symposium. And I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to share my views on Greece's strategy, how to become of the, uh, one of Europe's most important energy hubs. We're facing one of the biggest crises in generations because of the COVID-19 pandemic, sending shockwaves to health systems, economies, energy systems around the world, creating a new reality. There will be light at the end of this tunnel. Science will come out with the best possible solution. Therefore, we need to be optimists and do each and every one of us what needs to be done to create a more sustainable future. In the post-COVID-19 era, the need for a sustainable environment for green economies and prosperous societies is becoming even more demanding. This is a one-way road and a priority globally, as for instance, the European Green Deal Investment Plan in the EU is in this direction, in order for public and private investments to focus on the transition to a climate neutral, competitive, green and circular economy. Over the past 10 years, Greece has made tangible progress in modernizing the energy sector and has established itself as a regional energy center at the crossroads of Europe, Asia and Africa. The Greek government will spend on the implementation of the National Energy and Climate Plan over 40 billion euros in the next decade, as large investments will accelerate the development of environmentally friendly and renewable energy sources. The country also plans to further strengthen its position as a regional energy center. The energy sector is powering Greece's passage into the future. And key infrastructure investments enable the development of regional gas hub. Numerous PCI projects are currently under construction or in the structuring phase, including the TAP, IGB, EastMed, Poseidon pipelines, and the Alexandrupoli FSRU. which uh, these projects are expected to enhance the diversification of gas supply sources. Significant pipeline include 2 billion 
uh, for gas networks and storage facilities and 2.2 billion for international gas pipelines. The ample availability of renewable energy potential, including wind, hydro, solar, geothermal, biomass, solar thermal, combined with ongoing large-scale infrastructure projects involving Greece, TAP, IGB, East Med, pipelines, EuroAsia Interconnector, etc., show that Greece will be a key player in the formulation of the EU energy mix contributing to the energy efficiency and independence from specific suppliers. Furthermore, it will provide significant investment opportunities in all energy industries that will accelerate the development of sustainable and environmentally friendly and renewable energy sources. A crucial topic for the Greek energy sector is the decarbonization and the digging delignitization efforts. We were pleased to hear PPC's latest announcements that it plans to cease operational, the operation of existing lignite-fired pl power plants by 2023 and Ptolemaida 5 by 2028. At the same time, the capacity of wind and solar energy in the country will be increased by 800 megawatts per year until 20, uh, per year until 2030. The development strategy provides for investments in the magnitude of 9 billion euros in the next 10 years. That is about 900 million per year. The Greek government has also decided to restructure state-controlled electricity and plans the privatization of significant energy assets such as the two companies of the Public Gas Corporation, DEPA Infrastructure and DEPA Commercial, the Hellenic Electricity Distribution Network Operator, as well as move on towards further liberalization of the Greek energy market. Our job at HRADF and the implementation of the privatization program of the fund's energy assets is an additional significant driver towards the sector's further development. We have done so with the successful privatization of VESFA. I firmly believe that the company's new strengths will help enhance the role and the position of, of the country as an energy hub in the EU and the wider geographical region and will further fo foster system stability. Moving forward, in December 2019, we launched a tender for DEPA infrastructure and in January 2020 for DEPA commercial. Both companies attracted significant investor interest during a challenging period. Following the coronavirus outbreak, we considered necessary to provide flexibility to interested parties in terms of the submission of the required documentation for their expressions of interest. At the same time, we continued with the evaluation of the expressions of interest received, making the most out of the lockdown period. Six interested parties pre-qualified for the next phase for the 100% of DEPA infrastructure and seven parties for DEPA commercial. Both tenders are now in phase B with investors conducting due diligence in the companies. You might have already heard us talk about a unique and very challenging project, not only because of its technical complexity, but uh, also for its national and geostrategic importance the underground gas storage facility in South Kavala. Planned gas infrastructure, together with the development of the underground gas storage facility, is anticipated to safeguard the country's security of energy supply 
with a view of establishing the country as an energy hub in the region. This geologically formed gas storage uh, from an almost depleted gas uh, field located offshore, about 30 kilometers offshore of Kavala City in the North Aegean Sea, has ideal characteristics for the proposed use and proximity to key infrastructure. It is expected to be the first underground gas storage facility in the country, contributing significantly to the efficient operation of the Greek gas market. In June 2020, we launched an international public tender process for the award of the concession agreement to use, develop and operate the gas storage for a period of up to 50 years following the licensing of the project. The tender shall be conducted in two stages. We're currently in stage one, the submission of expressions of interest expected by October 19th. And after that, we will move on with the pre-qualification of candidates and we'll enter phase B, ending with the submission of binding offers and the selection of the preferred concessionaire. Allow me to present to you the reasons why this is a unique opportunity for someone to invest in the first underground gas storage facility in Greece. Number one, the lignitization efforts backed by the country's National Energy and Climate Plan drive significant investments in gas-fired power generation and renewable energy projects which will only emphasize the long-term importance of natural gas. Greece's low natural gas penetration compared to its EU peers, and coupled with the aggressive distribution network expansion plans underway, solidifies the critical role natural gas will play in the country's energy landscape. Secondly, this is the only long-term gas storage facility in Greece and only one of two in the Balkan region. So the UGS is expected to have a very important role in the security of supply planning while opening new possibilities for efficiency in the energy um, and, uh, natural gas trading and prior, uh, curtailing prices. Greece is a fertile playing field for the development of the South Kavala gas storage facility, having no long-term storage capacity. In contrast, EU member countries retain an average capacity equal to 25% of their annual consumption. Third, the, the underground gas storage facility will allow operators of natural gas fired power plants without dual fuel to fulfill their security of supply obligations during the winter period, which are currently partially covered by the use of Revithusa LNG terminal as a stopgap storage solution. Fourth, this is a regulated asset operating in a reliable and transparent environment. The UGS will be organized in the form of independent natural gas system with regulated third-party access, while the concession will have a maximum of duration of 50 years. The energy regulator will provide the outline of the tariff regulatory framework ahead of the binding offers phase. Last but equally important, the underground gas storage is included in the fourth PCI list of European Commission since October 2019. This means that the project is eligible to apply for funding from the Connecting Europe facility, effectively a 35 to 50 percent 
CAPEX. Also, is eligible to apply for support under other EU programs, such as the European Fund for Strategic Investments and the European Structural Investment Funds. Ladies and gentlemen, while the energy map in Southeast Europe and Eastern Mediterranean changes rapidly, Greece emerges as one of the most essential pillars of security and stability in the region. Our country is at the crossroads of three continents, acting as a gateway to the South Corridor, with three existing gas entry points, two pipelines connecting Greece to Bulgaria and Turkey, and one LNG terminal. Greece presents unique opportunities for international investors in the energy sector and welcomes investments in green energy and infrastructure. Investors should be confident and with a feeling of trust for the funds they bring in our country and not to miss the opportunity to position themselves in a promising market. Thank you. Thank you for all these uh, interesting insights. I'm very glad to hear that uh, there are a lot of uh, developments and um, we talk all the time about energy transition, but it's really nice to see that the dev developments take place, developments that will uh, actually lead us towards a low carbon economy. And you have already mentioned a lot of uh, key features of this energy transition, like um, decarbonization, you mentioned the, de de I'm sorry, lignitization in Greece, you mentioned about the underground storage facilities, and it becomes very obvious, at least to me, that energy will, uh, Greece will play a very important role in this energy transition, not only for the country itself, but for the whole Europe. Indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, so I suggest that we continue further with uh, Mr. Maralis, Vice Chairman of uh, ADMIE. Mr. Maralis, welcome on board. And uh, please, uh, share with us your insights from uh, your own uh, experience. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for this invitation to participate in this important meeting. Given the conditions of the global COVID pandemic, the, this kind of public debates becomes even more important in order to make sure that we don't delay the important transitions, the important transformations, that have already started in the energy sector. Since the topic of our panel today has to do with networks and the dynamics of privatizations, I would like to make some points, some references from the experiences we have had with IPTO, Admier, the Greek TSO, a company that changed its ownership and its institutional uh, structure three years ago. Uh, as you all most probably know, IPTO used to be a subsidiary of the Public Power Corporation until 2017. So in 2017, the ownership of bundling was completed from the Public Power Corporation and a new strategic investor was included in the ownership structure of IPTO. This example, IPTO, has become, uh, I think, and we believe, a very successful example of an efficient cooperation between the state and the private mm -hmm. sector. So let's go back a bit to remember the history of the sector of the electricity sector in Greece. IPTO was firstly founded in 2011 as a subsidiary of the Public Power Corporation and was responsible for the transmission system operation. So after 2017, the Greek state still owns 51% of the shareholder and of the shareholder structure. The state grid corporation of China owns 24% of the company and the rest 25% is free floating in the stock exchange. This change in the ownership as well as this change in the relations with the rest of the institutions in the Greek electricity market was a big challenge in all levels for the company, for the employees in the company, as well as for the, all the institutions in the Greek energy market. This change demanded for a new strategy, 
a new strategy not only as far as system planning and development is concerned, but also a challenge in all levels of internal structures in the company. We had to go through a radical transformation in all levels of the company in order to make sure that we have from the very first day of the new company structure all the terms, all the conditions for a successful development, for a successful growth of IPTO. With the new form of IPTO, the company had to prove that it can not only plan and design, but that it can also implement significant investment of infrastructure, and I mean basically infrastructure of transmission system in the, com in the country. This infrastructure had for many years, and in some cases even for decades, been delayed. We had to position ourselves in the new environment, in the new complex of relations with the banking system in the new complex, in the new environment, with all the market participants. We had to position ourselves in an autonomous condition in the stock exchange, and of course in new relations with all the suppliers, all the contractors that participate in the construction of our big infrastructure projects, as well as with the energy market players, and I mean the producers of energy, the suppliers and so on. The new shareholder structure, so exactly this uh, relation between the state and the private sector within one company, gave us the necessary leverage to negotiate successfully in issues of regulation, in issues of contracts with uh, suppliers and contractors, as well as in issues of financing and in general relations with not only the general government, the central government of Greece, but also from the level of the local authorities for projects that we are implementing in their territory, as well as in relations with uh, the Brussels for important projects in the country. Since 2017, IPTO has been, has developed, has grown, and has become an even bigger company within only three years. State Grid Corporation of China, which is the system, transmission system owner in China, is one of the biggest companies worldwide in terms of capitalization, and has contributed not only with capital, but also with technology knowledge and we have been using this technical knowledge of our investor in order to incorporate that in our planning and in our future development for the transmission system. I mean, I think you can all understand that uh, IPTO, being part of the old public power corporation, uh, had to go through a deep cultural change as well. The coexistence of executives and of employees from old companies like Public Power Corporation or Desmie in the past, but also executives and employees from the market and from a foreign company such as State Grid, demanded the development of new management rules, the development of new rules of operation for the company, and most importantly, new skills from our employees. We had to rationalize processes and methodologies. We had to introduce the term, the basic concept of cost benefit in all the aspects of our activities. And we had to make the timeline of the execution of the expansion of the system expansion projects the key for success. These challenges were not only inside the company. There were also challenges in the outside environment, and by that I mean basically the relation of IPTO with uh, other institutions, but also the way that other institutions were used to be to see IPTO. And I mean the regulator, the Ministry of Energy, but also international organizations. So this shift from the previous in, environment of operation of IPTO uh, created new conditions in order for IPTO to be able to develop its own strategy as a transmission system operator and its own strategy as an investor in infrastructure. So basically the same challenge was also an opportunity. And an opportunity that we had to take advantage of in order to transform to the biggest energy investor in the country at the moment. 
So these challenges were also combined with the potential to focus on the very, very core of our own development as a company. And the core of the development for our company is the development of new transmission system around the country. And of course, a big part of that are the interconnections of the islands that have been delayed for many years but also to develop a new transmission system that can be the corridor of the renewable energies that will flow not only within the country but also in the borders with all the neighboring countries. The successful dealing of these challenges and taking also all other conditions into our hands gave us the path and the road to the successful results of the last three years. We have now a very large investment program of 5 billion years for the coming decade until 2029 and we are constantly creating value not only for our shareholders since we develop and invest in these transmission projects across the country and the islands but we are also contributed contributing significantly in the reduction of the cost for the consumers of electricity around the country during the last three years, the system expansion, the transmission system expansion, has been accelerated significantly. And in order to give you a few numbers, during the last three years, we have contracted projects of around 2 billion years. In 2017, our investments were on the level of 70 million euros. In 2018, this number went up to 178 million euros. And in 2019, we achieved 250 million euros of investment. 2020, despite all the COVID pandemic restrictions, we are also estimating that we will go higher than 250 euro, million euros of investments. We started by giving emphasis on the interconnections of the islands and mainly the Cyclades region. We have already completed three out of four phases of interconnections in the cyclades. A few days ago, we were glad to see also Naxos Island be part of the interconnected system. And in a few days from now, we will also see the second interconnection, submarine interconnection between Attica region and Syros. Interconnection of Crete Island is also a project of national importance. So we are currently implementing it two different phases. The first one is the so-called small interconnection, although it's not small at all in terms of technical and budget. Between Crete and Peloponnese is currently under execution, and we are working to complete this interconnection in the coming months. The laying of the submarine cable has also started from the Crete side. And we are also already starting works in that second interconnection, which is the interconnection between Crete and Attica through our subsidiary Ariadne interconnection. This is one of the biggest construction projects, infrastructure projects that has been announced in the country during the last years, together with the project of Eleniko and the fourth metro line in Athens. Last June, we signed the contracts with our contractors in Crete and works in Attica and in Crete have already started. The planning for the transmission system includes also Dodecanese island regions and North Aegean. And these islands are going to be reconnected before 2019. At the same time, we're also developing the international interconnections with all the neighboring countries, including Italy and countries in the Balkan region. We have also accelerated the transition of the Creek energy market in the new target model in order for the coupling with the other European markets to take place. Within this year, this coupling will have eventually will be in place. We, have, we are also shareholders in the new energy stock exchange. We have founded a new subsidiary to develop telecom services, Grid Telecom. And we managed to make Thessaloniki uh, the center of the new regional security control center for all Northeast Europe region. With these results, we can be very sure that IPTO is a turnaround story and a turnaround story that can be a reference 
point for the future of other organizations, other companies and institutions in the Greek economy. Some indicative financial results of the last year, of the last years. Uh, in 2019, we, have a, we had a double record in investments and in profits. In investments, we reached 250 million euros, as I said before. That was an increase of 40% in compared to the last year and in the profits we had an increase of nine to nine point four percent in 76 million euros this important this very strong financial position of ipto is also proved by the results of the first semester of 2020 total revenues were 137 million euros and that was an increase of nine percent and investments were also increased by 57% in 122 million euros. This improvement in the financial results was achieved through rationalization of our OPEX, and this includes several aspects, among which is also the, the salaries of the employees, but also the improvement of the financial expenses. Having a strategic investor in the company, such as State Grid, gave us access in new capital markets, including China. During the last months, IPTO signed new contracts for loans that improved significantly the financial cost of our company. And this is how we are very confident that we have a very good condition to implement our investment plan of 5 billion euros for the coming years. For the Critatica project, a project that is, has a budget of 1 billion euros, we are going to use 200 million euros for own from our own capital, 400 million euros from European grants, and of course our contract that was signed a few weeks ago with Eurobank for 400 million euros. At the same time, a few days ago, we had a new loan agreement for 400 million euros with National Bank, Bank of Piraeus, Bank of China, and Alpha Bank. This agreement is the first agreement in with which many Greek banks and, of course, Bank of China cooperated in the same agreement. And this will be used for refinancing old loans, but also to help us in the moving capital for IPTO in the coming years. These results have been uh, taken very positively by the investment community in general. We had a recent report by Eurobank Equities that sees a potential for growth for more than 50% compared to previous and current levels and includes our stock in the portfolio of its main investment options. We are expecting to see an increase in the regulated asset base of the company and we are expecting to see a, a rate of development in profitability by more or less 10% in terms of EBITDA during the next five years. So we are expecting, based on this report, uh, to see more than 130 million euros benefits for the shareholders from IPTO Admir Holding. And this is more or less a, a, a return of around 5%. The strategic role of IPTO is not only restricted in the transmission system expansion and in the 10-year network development plan that they presented previously. Our target is to make the transmission system operator of Greece an enabler of the transition of the country to green power, to renewable energies. And of course, the driver behind this is the decarbonization and the decarbonization plan of the country. We are very much interested and we are fo focusing currently in playing a key role as well as in the storage of electricity and as well as in the development of offshore wind power that is going to be de developed in the Greek seas. Uh, most of you probably know that offshore has been going on for many years in North Europe and elsewhere in the world and right now technologies are available to also start developing important projects in the Greek Aegean. For this, for offshore but also for storage, we are cooperating both with internal Greek companies but also with international companies in order to develop specific projects. So trying to make 
uh, let's say, a conclusion in these remarks, I would say that the model of IPTO being a company of having strategic investor, having the Greek state, but also having a presence in the stock exchange, is a model of how companies can make sure that despite the difficult conditions of the global economy, we can operate efficiently and we can go over the previous old model of the state-owned companies. And this can be done in the benefit of the consumers and the Greek economy in general. This is also not only in business terms for IPTO, since we are implementing very rapidly the interconnections in order to reduce the cost of supply of electricity, but also in terms of financial conditions, see we, since we are achieving high profitability for our shareholders. But one indication that I consider probably one of the most important uh, conditions for the long-term growth of IPTO is the fact that we are attracting human capital, and I mean executives, engineers, uh, educated people, not only from Greece, but also from Europe, people who want to work for our projects, since they see high potential of career also in our companies. And these people are currently being employed also in our subsidiaries, for example, in Ariadne Interconnection that is implementing Critatica. And these are the same people that, that we are going to be based on to implement all our new projects in the future. So it's very important for us exactly because we have the specific role in the Greek energy market, but in general, as a company of infrastructure investment in Greece, to see other turnaround stories in other companies and institutions in Greece as well. This will create an even better dynamic to achieve the biggest challenge, to my opinion, for humanity, which is the energy transition. Climate change and, of course, the, the global pandemic environment that we are currently facing is the field that we, as a generation, have to give a response to. And in order to give a successful response, we need to have very efficient organizations, companies and institutions. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, I think that... Um you shared with us a lot of interesting uh, points. I think you made clear that uh, the IPTO, the Independent Power Transmission System Operator, can play indeed a significant role in uh, this energy transition and decarbonization, and uh, particularly for Greek islands, as you said, with uh, the projects that you before mentioned. Um, I don't know, I started writing down some of your some points that you raised and there are so many there are a lot of uh, developments that really promise this acceleration of uh, decarbonization you mentioned the strategic investors you said you do see the challenges as opportunities and um, i can only agree with you that system expansion that your new target model market coupling storage can only help this energy transition move forward in a higher speed Thank you very much. Uh, we will get back to you. But um, now, since you also mentioned this financial perspective of the edge transition, I would like to move forward with uh, Miss uh, Banila. Hello, Miss uh, Banila. I'm not sure if you can. Uh, yep, you are. Think yep. Hello. And uh, continue with you and um, hear your insights about uh, this topic. Thank you very much. Yes, um, good morning. I, I don't know why you mentioned <laughs> uh, financial as considering that uh, DESPA is actually the other energy TSO in Greece so managing the national network, uh, maybe. Uh, but in any case, good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for, for inviting me. Uh, as a CEO of DESPA, I will... Uh, Try to present uh, our view of uh, how uh, privatization can, as I think very, uh, very well described in the title of this panel, uh, untapping uh, the value of, of networks. So, how the privatization can enhance 
uh, the value that is inside the organizations uh, is inside uh, of the network. Uh, and what we have been done in these uh, almost two years uh, since uh, the uh, completion of the process of the privatization of DESPA, that as you know was uh, acquired by the consortium Sempluga, who is made by three main uh, international network operators NAM, the Italians NAM, uh, the Belgian Fluxis, and the the Spanish, uh, uh, the Spanish Enagas, um, more recently followed by a Greek uh, uh, partner as well for Blue um, So I have prepared a short presentation to streamline, to better streamline uh, what is uh, uh, my view in this regard. I think a few, a few minutes. Please tell me if you can see the presentation. Hello again. Actually, I meant before that uh, Mr. Margaris mentioned a lot of financial aspects, and that's why I would like to introduce uh, Miss Vanilla. I'm sorry for oh, sorry. this uh, error. So please, uh, Miss Vanilla, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, uh, uh, everyone. Let me first congratulate the Hellenic Association uh, for Energy Economics on organizing a successful conference this year, despite the obstacles created by the pandemic. And of course, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be part of this panel today. National Bank of Greece constitutes the leading local banking franchise for energy initiatives in Greece. We have an outstanding credit portfolio, 4 billion euros under management, that places us number one. But most importantly, we do have a firm institutional strategy to sustain our top ranking. We target another 3 billion euros of uh, investments, particularly in the energy sector, over the course of the next three years. And of course, a substantial part of that is going to be channeled towards uh, privatizations related to uh, the Greek energy networks. Uh, the scale, the condition, and the connectivity of those networks are, of course, critical for Europe's energy transition targets uh, towards cre creating uh, a, a climate neutral economy that uh, ensures affordable energy for all the consumers, that uh, actually uh, decreases the dependency on imports, increases the energy supply, and of course, creates an environmental friendly and healthy living standard for all the EU citizens. All of us at National Bank of Greece see ourselves as being directly involved in such efforts. Year to date, under either financing or financial advisory capacity, we have led all uh, Greek networks associated uh, transactions that they have been marked in Greece. Indicatively, I could mention the uh, full ownership of bundling of the inter independent power transmission operator launched between 2016-17, uh, that was previously mentioned by Mr. Margaret as well that technically resulted in the stake uh, sale of 24% to state grid and also the subsequent listing of Vipto holdings in Athens Stock Exchange. A year later, in 2018, we constituted the sole uh, financing counterparty of a Euro 360 million uh, debt financing for the acquisition of DESPA by the international consortium of SNAM, Enagas and, and Fluxes. As it was already mentioned below, uh, before, we also, it was with just a couple of days, I actually concluded another 400 million euros debt financing for the independent power transmission operator in which NBG subscribed the largest ticket amongst the syndicate banks. And we also assumed the leading role of the deal coordinator and co-structuring bank. We do have a very robust appetite uh, to, to participate actively in the upcoming capital expenditure plan of DESFA as well. Effectively, our con contribution in un un unlocking the value of networks is holistic. 
we do assist uh, international uh, investors and local investors to uh, to join and participate in the in the tender processes. Uh, we also support, though post the completion of the privatizations, their undisrupted investment plans uh, towards uh, upgrading and expanding the actual networks themselves. NBG is currently enjoying uh, the, the, the strongest liquidity amongst its peers in the local market. And as such, we see our institution being a natural fit to lead uh, the, the uh, important privatization agenda of the country, more than 50% of which relates uh, to Greek uh, energy network privatizations. Concentration risk in a bankable format can be largely assumed by MBG, and this is something that we have seen uh, to be well, well received by uh, the investors, allowing them to, uh, to, to deliver the underlying mandates with speed of execution, at least ensuring uh, the, uh, the absolutely necessary certainty of funds for the successful conclusion of these transactions. As a final remark, I would like to make special reference to our integrated corporate and investment banking team uh, at uh, MBG, which beyond its typical uh, commercial lending uh, activity, it is uh, uh, also established particularly to address technically complex transactions in line with the international organizational standard of the various international competitors of MBG, uh, we have created an integrated MBG's CIB team that fits as a one-stop shop, both for financing, structured financing and advisory services to our local and our international uh, clients. Particularly for our international clients, our, our teams remain extremely uh, focused to align their banking experience with the global standards and international banking practices. So to ensure that we contribute to make their investment journey in Greece as smooth as possible. Thank you very much. Hello, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you very much. Now I think that I would like to continue with uh, Mr. Nicola Batilana and uh, listen to his uh, useful insights as well. Yeah, okay, so sorry, uh, I, I thought you were mis mis um, pronouncing my name, that's why I continue with my presentation. I'm sorry, my mistake, I apologize for that, uh, please, the floor is yours. Well, in any case, I, I would like to say that uh, I wanted to bring uh, uh, a more operational and uh, inside view of uh, what a privatization has, has, uh, has meant for DESPA uh, in these almost two years. So I will, uh, I don't know if you can see the presentation now. Yes, we can see it. Yeah. Very well, thank you. Um, so I'm I'm a fan of privatization. I have I have seen uh, the, the the benefit of privatization and different uh, approaches uh, uh, based on stock exchange, based on uh, other other uh, rules like uh, as uh, and I think that the name of of the panel is is very much appropriate in this regard. I'm happy the value that is already there because uh, uh, to build and to operate and to maintain, to develop uh, networks, especially in the energy uh, sector, you need a huge uh, expertise, you need uh, know-how, you need, uh, you need uh, vision. Uh, bringing the, the private uh, framework into, into these companies is, uh, is uh, allowing to, to reach the dimension is uh, several areas uh, that are enabling further growth, uh, uh, adding value to the company, and, and uh, uh, increasing the speed of the transformation of the energy framework. In this what we have seen uh, and we have worked in three main pillars uh, in this regard. Evolution and the repositioning of, uh, of DESPA, uh, 
the internal transformation and the business development. By evolution and repositioning, we mean uh, taking into consideration the new framework uh, where uh, the company was uh, situated as a new status of private company. This was uh, enabling uh, um, many uh, to, to start removing many constraints uh, from, from procurement regulation, internal procurement regulation to uh, having access to um, uh, hiring uh, and uh, a new uh, organizational uh, tools, uh, uh, leveraging on the shareholders' knowledge and expertise, uh, uh, and taking into consideration the growth of the natural market here in Greece, uh, uh, because of the important uh, decisions that have been made uh, in the uh, lignite, lignitization of, uh, of the production of electricity, uh, linked to the market design, to the interconnections of Greece uh, in, the, in the whole Balkan region and uh, Southeast uh, Europe uh, with, uh, with the new investments that are uh, now uh, very close to Operation Prima Meetup, which will connect uh, Despa and Despa network and, and Greek market to the huge market of Italy. Um, the critical engagement uh, of, of the company, so to try to, to foster and to, and to enhance uh, our relationship with the other European and Greek stakeholders, um, groups, organizations. Also giving a, a more uh, strength to our uh, public relations and external communication, and uh, to activate uh, DESPA roles uh, in uh, groups, uh, projects, and initiatives in the area of uh, uh, alternative fuels, uh, green transport, green transportation, um, hydrogen, and uh, but also strengthening corporate social responsibility, uh, in specifically in regard to the communities uh, where uh, DESPA is, uh, is present uh, through its uh, infrastructure. Uh, the, the relation with the territory is always uh, very important for, for, for us because uh, our infrastructure are located on, on the territory and we remain there for 15 more years. And the, and the active and proactive uh, and uh, transparent uh, relationship with, with, the, with the territory, with the people, with the stakeholders is extremely important for us. In regard to the internal transformation, uh, the main areas uh, were and are related to people. With the, the first, uh, the first success was last year to achieve a new collective labor agreement uh, with the unions of the company, enabling uh, enabling flexibility, meritocracy, meritocracy uh, to, to, to link uh, remuneration to the result of the company. Uh, we worked on the career and succession planning uh, to the hiring processes. We, we developed uh, and uh, we will uh, soon have uh, a new internal communication portal um, as well as a new organization to, to better streamline the, the challenges that in the organization needs to be clearly allocated and the responsibilities, of course. Um, in order to support the reorganization, and, and the, the expansion of the company also in, the, in its business, uh, we started to design uh, a new IT strategy and, and the roadmap to, to the evolution of the IT, of this IT strategy in the next years. Um, we launched uh, a, problem, a program of digital transformation, uh, streamlining uh, the, the need and started to change the main, uh, the main tools that, uh, and adding new tools uh, to, in order to better cope, uh, and especially in regard to reach, uh, to increase uh, uh, the speed of the internal processes, and uh, to enhance uh, um, a, a significant reduction of time to market in new, in new investment, in new business. Uh, 
uh, we were also able to test, uh, uh, fortunately, because of the COVID crisis uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, the effectiveness of uh, some of our uh, projects and initiative, uh, because the company was was totally uh, able to uh, to remote from to work from remote, and also to introduce uh, uh, further flexibility in our uh, daily maintenance operation with the workforce mobile uh, organization, etc. We, we also started to consolidate internally the know-how of the company and to introduce a new, a new framework uh, with compliance uh, system, with corporate framework, uh, uh, reviewing all the complex and, and vast uh, internal uh, legal and procedural framework of the company uh, through a very uh, detailed and demanding uh, business process we that interested uh, all uh, of our uh, organization. And of course, uh, uh, the last uh, and important pillar of business development, we, we are now uh, engaged uh, in an in a investment plan which accounts for more than 500 million in the next few years. Uh, these investments are mainly related to the development of the demand in Greece, uh, uh, reaching new areas like West Macedonia, <coughs> Western Greece, uh, but also uh, interconnecting with the neighboring country like North Macedonia. Um, we are also uh, interconnecting the network with, with the TAP, the project will be uh, soon uh, completed. Uh, in, the next uh, month, basically. Uh, we have initiatives in the small scale uh, area. Uh, we believe that the small scale demand of, of LNG uh, will start uh, only if there will be a clear roadmap of delivering the infrastructures that are needed by the market in order to take commitment to make the necessary investment uh, to start transforming. Uh, uh, their uh, productive or their um, fleet uh, in order to embrace this uh, uh, new fuel, traditional, uh, the, the shipping uh, is, uh, is being uh, dominated by oil products. We believe that there is uh, a significant growth perspective in LNG because of its uh, amazing characteristics of uh, um, under, from the environmental point of view. Uh, these projects uh, will, be, uh, will be soon, uh, uh, one of these will be in operation end of next year, the other uh, the FID is expected uh, by, by the end of this year. Uh, we are also very active uh, and we are willing to participate in almost the only investments that are strategic uh, in the sense that are related to increase the interconnection of, uh, of Greece uh, with, uh, with other countries, uh, or to increase uh, the opportunity of uh, delivering energy in the form of natural gas into the country. Increasing liquidity is uh, one of the main uh, tools to uh, increase uh, the flexibility and reduce uh, and reduce the the cost of, uh, of uh, energy uh, in the country. Uh, we also see opportunities uh, in uh, overseas, outside Greece, outside Europe, uh, by participating in international uh, uh, projects where our know-how and expertise in managing one of the biggest uh, LNG terminal in Mediterranean uh, might be key, uh, and uh, we are uh, now in a final stage uh, um, regarding to the TIPIC project, where one of the biggest uh, uh, regasification plants is, uh, is going to be completed uh, next year, and we are in the final stage, and we are um, really close to, uh, to 
an award in that regard. It's, it's a great opportunity for DASFA and for our stakeholders to start operating in an area where uh, natural gas uh, is, uh, is key and, and strongly uh, growing. Uh, last but not least, hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen, uh, we see hydrogen as, as the future uh, in, uh, in, uh, as, a gasos, uh, as a gas fuel. Uh, we uh, believe that our networks uh, will continue to operate uh, with hydrogen, with a mix of hydrogen uh, in, um, to be delivered. We are active uh, uh, following the example of our shareholders on most of the tables that are now uh, under, uh, undergoing in Europe uh, in regard to the uh, assessment of the network, existing networks, uh, to, to be able to deliver hydrogen, to uh, design the new infrastructures as hydrogen ready, and to see and to evaluate and to pursue all the opportunities in regard to the possible use of hydrogen, uh, either alone or related to hydrogen, to natural gas. So this is what uh, what we are doing so far. Uh, I think that uh, the example of DESPA is uh, a successful example so far in the, the organizing game and tapping the value of, uh, of the network. Uh, and uh, I, I'm finished with my presentation and I thank all of you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nicola Batilana. It was a really interesting presentation. Uh, indeed, it seems to me that, uh, and I'm sure to everyone, that uh, DESFA, the Hellenic Gas Transmission System Operator, plays a very important role in the energy transition. You mentioned so many interesting uh, developments about regasification, blue hydrogen, the strategic investments, uh, but also the interaction, how important the interaction is with uh, other stakeholders. And uh, something that um, I was really glad to hear was about this uh, new program that you introduced with digital transformation, and then you mentioned the speed of internal processes. I think that this is really important because speed really matters in this energy transition and we saw that uh, it was last month the european commission announced actually raised the greenhouse uh, gas emission reductions targets for 2030 from i think uh, 40 to 55 percent and um, i'm sure that uh, we need very good coordination between the different stakeholders thank you very much for this uh, nice presentation and um, at that point here now, I would like to thank all the participants for um, the very useful and interesting insights. Um, I would suggest that um, perhaps I can um, raise a few short questions and uh, maybe each of you can uh, spend uh, one, two, three minutes. Um, it depends on how much you would like to uh, share with us on these topics from different angles and different points of view. So, for instance, I would like to uh, ask you about uh, the different key ingredients for this successful privatization process, like uh, reforms that maybe stimulate competition, because this is something, in my opinion, necessary in order to boost and uh, accelerate transition, as well as about other regulatory reforms that you think that are needed. So, please, uh, perhaps we can start with uh, Ms. Babilis. Uh, I'm sorry, I think that you're muted. Could you please? Uh... You're right. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so obviously there are ingredients that uh, we control and ingredients that we cannot control. Uh, for instance, uh, in ingredients that uh, we cannot fully control is the macro environment. Uh, a conducive macro environment will obviously um, uh, help uh, a privatization. Um, before co the COVID-19 outbreak, we saw a very significant interest in uh, Greek um, assets, especially in the infrastructure um, sector. And uh, I have to say that most of this interest has remained uh, uh, intact um, throughout this difficult and challenging period. Uh, with the exception, perhaps, of specific sectors as the 
airports that have been um, very heavily hit globally. But for the uh, gas transactions that uh, we launched uh, in this period, we saw um, a significant and important um, uh, interest that, that has remained um, intact. Then uh, the quality of the asset itself also has um, plays a very significant role. What we can do to um, uh, is to we try to mature the assets before we launch the tender, and to resolve any issues before. Um, I mean, um, we try before launching the tenders to the extent possible, but um, definitely before the binding offers uh, submission date. For each asset, these issues uh, are different, but there are always um, uh, things to uh, take care of. Um, then one th another thing that um, we have seen that um, investors uh, are looking uh, for is certainty. So they need um, um, uh, clarity of process and transparency. And I think that we at HRADF um, have, um, um, have a very um, solid and transparent framework under which we operate. Investors are familiar with it and um, they're confident about uh, the way uh, our tender processes um, uh, will progress. Especially in the energy, uh, as far as the energy assets are concerned, investors will also need um, clarity on the regulatory framework. And, uh, and, and right, the regulator has uh, works towards uh, this uh, this end, and a lot of progress has been uh, made in uh, recent uh, years. So we always try to have the regulatory framework uh, finalized before. Uh, as soon as possible and definitely before the binding offers the submission um, date. And um, last but not least, uh, in a privatization, there are many people, many parties involved. Um, so uh, the alignment of all these different stakeholders is very important. So you have, for instance, the company itself that is being privatized. You have uh, um, HRADF, you have the regulator, the ministry, the shareholders, uh, even the, the institutions and um, the DG um, director, uh, the, the European Commission director. So everybody has to be aligned for a successful outcome. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Pavilis. I totally agree with you that transparency, clarity, and uncertainty, of course, is always there in the market, but uh, if we could uh, reduce it in order to attract strategic investors, I think that would be great. Thank you very much for your insights. So I think that uh, I would like to continue with uh, Mr. Ioannis Margaris. Again, thank you very much for your insightful presentation. I found it very interesting. Uh, please, if you have um, any comments. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Margaris, I think you're muted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you as well for this discussion. I would agree that in our sector, and I mean now the network sector, we need long-term vision. I mean, we need a constant environment in some basic parameters in order for not only us as a company to you know plan and invest, because we are talking about projects of billion years of uh, budget so the regulatory environment of course one of the most important aspects of our business and there's a lot of discussion in the network industry regarding the regulation of our industry and you know of course that parameters such as WAC uh, that defines our uh, cost of capital and, and so it defines also our uh, returns is a very important aspect you know to make sure that we have a long a, a road that we can see very few years ahead now going to that more specifically since we we are a country in Greece and of course this is also the case in Europe and worldwide but discussing about Greece since we are going through a very important energy transition and this means a change, a shift in the energy pattern, it's a shift in the technologies, 
it's a shift in the licenses in the contracts um, we think that it is time to start the discussion about regulatory incentives and that means basically not only having a regulator that makes sure that the plants are being kept but also having regulatory incentives that gives us the incentive in terms of financial um, uh, returns to achieve our targets even faster if possible or to introduce new technologies in the sector for example we are discussing about storage we are discussing about offshore and i think this is a, a would be an important aspect for uh, tso's uh, ipto at least to invest in such technologies even faster than than planned now a second aspect i would say in, in linking to the issue of competition apart from the target model that you all everybody knows that it will create a new competition environment for the Greek energy supply uh, i think that a, a different aspect which sometimes maybe it's overlooked is that uh, the sooner we make our investments the sooner we make our infrastructures the sooner we have a new transmission system in the company the better conditions for the competition will be available and in order for that to take place there are issues that have to do not with the energy complex as such but have to do with the general uh, legislation and the general environment of doing business in Greece and I can mention for example the permissions that we need to take in order to make our investment and in our infrastructures permissions that start from a very local organization up to the central government uh, and there is space for improvement there uh, we have seen that the critical root of our transmission expansion, and that basically means our investment uh, plan, uh, the critical root is being defined by these uh, permission procedures. But now, if we can focus there and find ways of having more fast track permissions, taking, of course, into account all the necessary environmental aspects of our projects, that would create a very, very competitive environment for more renewables to come in and for other aspects of uh, smart technologies to come in the system. Uh, last but not least, uh, and I mentioned it in, during my introduction, is that within a sector, and I mean, uh, for example, electricity, uh, as far as we are concerned mostly, uh, it doesn't only take one to, to make a change. We need to see turnaround stories all around the sector and of course these changes these reforms are not easy to take place and we know that but i think that we have examples now in greece that things will start to being reformed and i believe that before 2025 we can have a different energy sector as a structure and we need to make turnaround stories both in the companies but also in the state institutions um, and i think the regulator will play a significant role in that but also of course the national targets and policies thank you thank you very much uh, mr margaris uh, totally the permission the speed of permission procedure is uh, very important and i think it becomes obvious at least from this session that the value of networks to the energy transition is very important. And um, not only that, it's also that I would say that the interaction between different stakeholders, and I think up to my knowledge in the different parts of Europe, also the interaction between and coordination between transmission networks is evolving in order to actually move forward faster. So, and also the fact that networks will actually facilitate this um, transition towards the low carbon economy at both global and local, I would say, dimension. So I think that if we manage to combine these uh, two different uh, views and uh, magnitudes, then we will be able to move forward faster. Uh, so finally, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Banila about her insights on this uh, uh, topic. Yes, thank you, Vagelis. Uh, from from the bank's perspective, I mean, most of the points have been have been already covered. I would emphasize the the, the clarity on the transaction perimeter that is very much related to the regulatory framework. 
definitely well-structured processes that increase uh, price tension and ensure transparency in the ultimate award are, are, are key to, uh, you know, to, to deliver ultimately successful execution, which, as Sonia said uh, before, it's uh, from an investor's perspective as well what uh, the investors' community is looking uh, very much for. And ultimately, I would only add our track record in delivering successful processes itself. The more we're delivering our undertakings and the more successful transactions that we conclude, this becomes a credential itself and, uh, you know, makes uh, the country and all the associated transactions uh, more investable. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that uh, perhaps we can um, continue with uh, one more question, if uh, time permits us. Perhaps um, if you could uh, share with us uh, the biggest challenges that uh, you have identified in this uh, process of uh, privatization and whether you are aware of uh, any new plans for further privatization. I think that some of you have already mentioned some new projects that are currently involving. I think that would be great. Yes, Mr. Margaris. No, there's, there was a com some kind of problem in the sound. I, I lost the, the, the bit of the question. Oh, no worries, I can uh, repeat. I was saying that um, if, it was, if you could share with us some of the biggest challenges that you have identified during this process of privatization and whether you could um, name a few projects that um, are planned or are currently happening. Um. Well, I think I made a reference in the introduction. Um, the biggest challenge is to make sure that the the new the new structure, the new the new relation in the shareholder level, first of all, that this will be represented in the operation and in the business of the company directly. And by that, I mean that when you have enterprises that are of such size and uh, coming from these sectors you know electricity and of course gas sector but uh, i will speak about electricity sector are let's say very heavy sectors transitions and transformations are not taking place very easily and this is not the case only in greece this is a worldwide case and this has to do with the peculiarities of the of the sector itself now that that creates a very strong culture and when i mean culture i don't only mean behavior issues you know behavioral uh, cultural uh, identities i mean this culture is very strong in terms of creating procedures and methodologies and ways of doing business that is not easy to transform so one of the biggest challenges of uh, ipto's case was to make sure that we identify very clearly the targets of our company and that is existential who we are what is our business what is our target what is our role in the in the sector and this is not only an internal challenge as i said this is also a challenge to make sure that all the market and all the, the community around us and the environment understands that there is something different now uh, lying ahead now that was the biggest challenge i would say and i would give an example for example that we I think it would be easier for everyone to understand. Um, being part of a large company, for example, and being part of public power corporation, mean, means that the strategy itself is defined by the restrictions of the group of companies that belong there. Now, public power corporation had production, had supply, had transmission, and had distribution as well. Now, distribution is still part of the public power corporation, in Greece at least, uh, transmission was the first sector that went out of these old uh, vertical integrated utilities in Europe uh, through European guidelines. And so the transmission system was somehow developed during the previous years, taking into account that we have the, uh, the public power corporation as the basic uh, player. Um, I don't think it would be possible to achieve the results and the investments and the transmission system expansion that we have achieved during the last three years 
being part of such a vertical integrated company. Uh, and this is because uh, when you go out of such a group of companies, you understand that you have to deal by yourself with all the risks. And this means that you have by yourself to define what is important and what is less important, to, to set priorities as such. Um, this is why the interconnection of the islands took place and has been taking place very rapidly. Uh, and this is normal. This is not an issue of, uh, you know, uh, that I, I don't mean that there was something wrong being done in the previous years. I mean that this is by definition a different uh, condition for the transmission system operation to achieve the, the expansion and the, and the growth. The other challenge, of course, has to do with when it you have four investors in the company, uh, is to make sure that both the foreign investor, but also the Greek state, which are the main players, but also the, the, the you know the investors in the stock exchange, create a common language, create a common understanding of what are the priorities of the company, what are the restrictions, because you when you have foreign investors, they come from different uh, territories, they have different uh, aspirations. And in order to make sure that there is no conflict during business, that uh, any conflicts are resolved with the only criteria of the benefit of the company, this, this means that you have to take into account um, the, the global landscape, the global relations between countries, between businesses. Um, I think I, I would stick to that, but say that all these challenges uh, and they, these challenges were faced in the telecom sector um, many, many years ago. And there are many lessons to be learned also for the energy sector. Um, it will take place, the transition, the transformation will take place, I'm sure for that. Uh, the question is how we can do it more efficiently, how we can do it with less cost for the society, and how we can do it with the way that will be rational as in the total, and I mean rational in the sense that uh, we grow, we become larger and bigger, but at the same time we uh, fulfill our social mission, which is to achieve the energy transition, the climate targets, and have a better society and economy and environment in after 2030 and up to 2050. I think COVID, the COVID crisis is very strong and heavy for our societies but the, i think it is also a very good sign so that all policy makers but also companies and employees in our companies understand that we have a very important role to play in in the future of the health of our society it's not only profits for our shareholders profits are necessary to create investments for the future but we have a critical mission to 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 play Thank you very much, Mr. Margaris, for all these um, insights. It was really interesting to listen to you. And uh, I would say that, uh, yeah, transmission is um, very important and market coupling. But um, I think that in the future, um, energy markets with low uh, carbon emissions, also distribution plays a very critical role. And um, I think that sector coupling will also facilitate this transition. And um, I think that at this point, I would also like to talk a little bit about hydrogen and um, about, you mentioned before, Mr. Um, Nicola Batilana, this uh, small scale uh, LNG project. Maybe if you could uh, elaborate this a little bit to us. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Ivan Vangelos. Um, there, uh, there are significant sectors of the that uh, cannot, uh, in uh, the next uh, decades, uh, be easily reached by the electrification. Uh, shipping is one of them. Uh, heavy industry um, and other activities uh, would uh, have uh, benefits from reaching, uh, being reached by gas, natural gas, replacing their current uh, reliance on uh, oil uh, uh, products. Shipping is one of these uh, heavy, heavy transportation, um, which is 
quality uh, heavy trucks uh, are uh, another example. Um, in Italy, which is a specific uh, market in this regard, Germany as well, we have millions of uh, cars that are using natural gas as uh, fuel um, with a relatively low cost uh, of uh, transformation. So for us, natural gas is a natural uh, alternative fuel that would allow immediately to decrease uh, nearly 30% in the CO2 emissions compared to, our, to oil and uh, to decrease uh, almost to zero all the other emissions that are polluting our cities and, uh, and our seas. So we think that small scale is an important asset of this development. Uh, we can reach uh, uh, the shipping industry, the port with the LNG. We can reach remote areas where it would be too expensive to bring natural gas under the traditional way of pipeline. We can have, and these are now currently off the shelf technologies, we can have uh, uh, LNG, CNG coupled technology that are allowing to switch from LNG to CNG according to the consumption. Um, Desma wants to be uh, a key uh, operator and a neighbor in this sector. We identify this sector uh, in our strategy as a B2B service. So we provide, uh, uh, we can provide the, uh, the rent, Ease of the infrastructure, we can provide operational maintenance, we can certainly provide know how, consultant services, to develop these services. We want to be uh, a, a, a junction, a connecting element uh, between uh, the offer, so natural gas uh, undertakings that are willing to expand their portfolio into LNG, into gas, and customers, which are currently not reachable by the natural gas network. This is our, our goal. I think the infrastructures that we are uh, building, Revitusa and uh, the other one that we will uh, soon uh, start building, the objective, will be the starting step in this regard. But in the meantime, we have to work, uh, of course, on all the uh, legal, uh, regulatory, uh, tax uh, uh, constraints that we might have into this, uh, uh, into this roadmap. So it is a challenge, and we have to look at other uh, European markets, member states that are already uh, advanced in this process. We see a lot of interest from the shipping area. In regard to hydrogen, I think hydrogen must be seen as a future uh, in the next uh, 35 and, and above years, um, either as, as a final use of energy or as a, uh, a way to storage energy uh, alternatively and to use the existing infrastructure, gas infrastructure, as, as a storage. So this is the other area where we are uh, investing energy so far, but hopefully uh, very soon also some capex to develop pilot projects uh, and other and other initiatives. In this regard, we we hope that we will soon uh, be part of the White Dragon project, uh, and we are cooperating with our international shareholders, namely uh, Islam, Enagas, and Flaxis to be part in the European Association that are all working into, into this direction. Thank you very much, Mr. Batilana. Uh, we see that the natural gas will also contribute to a large extent to this decarbonization and that uh, hydrogen will also facilitate this reduction of carbon emissions in sectors where it is uh, difficult to be done otherwise. So we have uh, one minute maybe uh, Ms. Um, Argiro Banila or uh, Sonia Babilis would like to 
make a last uh, comment about uh, this topic because financing this energy transition is very important. So just uh, one last concluding comment from your side, please. No, on MBG side, and uh, as per my initial uh, speech, we remain very much committed to deliver our liquidity and our balance sheet towards these initiatives. We are here to facilitate the country's energy transition, and uh, we actually have the resources and the infrastructure uh, to lead that and be part of the overall success uh, story. Uh, in terms of bridging the cultural gap with investors, and as I said, we remain very much focused on aligning our banking uh, uh, services to their uh, banking experience, which hopefully shall be uh, a good starting point to, to bridge any cultural uh, uh, gaps uh, required. Thank you very much, Ms. Vanilla. Ms. Babilis, any comments? Yeah. On our behalf at HRIDF, uh, we run competitive international non-discriminatory tender. When it comes to, um, to financing, we we'll also do everything in our power to uh, uh, to make sure that all uh, candidates uh, have equal uh, footing. Uh, at um, uh, we examine obviously each case uh, um, uh, separately. And uh, in uh, certain instances, uh, we have also considered providing staple financing to our uh, to the um, to our candidates in order to make sure that uh, we don't lose any candidate uh, that has um, a, a real um, and uh, a business plan and uh, would be good for the transformation of the company um, on, uh, based on an equal uh, opportunity. Uh, Thank you very uh, much, Ms. Vanillis. I would like to, at this point, to end this session and I would like to thank each of you separately for your uh, very useful insights and participation. And uh, let's uh, see these uh, global and local challenges as one and let's try to facilitate and accelerate this transition towards a low carbon economy by untapping also the value of networks. Thank you very much, all of you. I wish you a nice day.